Hello and welcome to the third and final video on the CloudBerry Remote Assistant. In the first video we had an electronic unboxing, the second video we visited the Remote Assistant Quick Support and today we're going to look at a situation in which both computers are using the Remote Assistant, the full version. So I have my two computers, computer one, which is going to control the remote computer, and computer two, which will allow remote control. Now, there are various options which we will be discussing today, and the first option I'm going to look at is how to set and modify the pin. So, without further ado, I go into options, I choose the security tab, and from there I'm going to set the pin length to 8 digits. I can also have the pin reset every few minutes, hours, or days. In my case, I'm going to set it so that it resets every minute. And you will immediately notice that the pin has gone up from four digits to an eight digit number. The computer ID and the pin need to be communicated to remote computers in order to allow them access. As you can appreciate, this type of access is attended. So unless there is someone who is able to communicate these digits, Remote access is not possible. So let us start. So I'm in computer one, and the first thing I will do, I need to key in the number. And when I connect, I'm going to be asked for the pin. The pin, since I set it to change every minute, has in fact changed. So, and as you can see, I'm establishing a connection. Computer one is set to computer two. I am trying to uh, perform actions, but these do not happen. Initially, I have set it up so that it is view only. If I move uh, something, it will move, but computer one is in read only mode. If computer one requests full access control, and here is the request, computer one requests full control, if I press yes, that will be granted. To take it back, to revert to view only, one has to press Alt Post. I'm going to say yes. And now, computer one can manage, and you will see the screen being red. So, that is the first method of connection. I am terminating this session, and we are back to where we start. You may notice below that I have encryption off, and unattended access off. So we are now going to look at the topic of encryption. So I go into options, I go into security, and the first option I have in order to achieve this is to check this box. That means that this session is going to be encrypted. Now without going too deep into this topic, encryption requires two parts. A private key, which is retained on your computer, and a public key which is shared with other computers. If you ever have a situation where your public key is in someone's hands and, and you want to revoke that, all you have to do is to regenerate the keeper, the private public key. Please be aware that any holders of your prior public key will no longer be able to use that key because it automatically becomes invalidated. So I have no one set as yet and I have reset it. Once I have done that, what I need to do is I need to be able to communicate this key. There are many methods, but one method you can achieve that is to save the key and provide it to third parties. Obviously, you should make every effort to keep the public key private so that it doesn't end up someone undesired having access to it. So, I've done that and I've saved. 
you will notice now that encryption is set to 1. So, I go back to computer 1 and I try to re-establish a connection. I hit connect. Now, this time I am being asked, computer 2 has uh, a private public key pair. Please provide the public key for that computer. I have received it in a secure manner and I'm going to key it in this box and suddenly I can connect. I still have the pin. And as you can see, I have established connection again. So I've proved my point and again we are disconnected. The final option, and this is important for certain people, is the requirement to have unattended access. I know many people who use a tool such as Cloudberry to access their own computers, which, which is remotely. If you recall in my first tutorial on this product, I mentioned you know, controlling a computer in another room. This is a case where unattended access is uh, a viable candidate. So by checking that, what will happen is that the pin will no longer be required. So I'm going to OK that. An attended access is now set to on. Encryption is on because of my public private key. And this time round, I'm going to connect. And here I am being asked for the login credentials of the computer. So even though it is an, ex an attended access, it does not mean a free for all. One still has to deal with the login name and the login uh, password of the remote computer. So there is still a layer of protection. And again, as you can see, one has control of the computer. If I go into the hamburger menu, you will notice that when you have an, att an attended access, full control is the default. Let's face it, it doesn't make too much sense to have an attended access in which you can do nothing on the remote computer. Let us disconnect again. When disconnecting now, you have the option to, to tell Cloudberry how to handle the remote session. We are talking about an extended access. You can say, leave the session open. So the session will remain open and someone who has physical access to that computer can effectively type in it. You can lock the session, which is equivalent to the Windows lock. Or you can sign out and go back. So these are the three options. I can have the default action and I can have don't ask about future sessions with this remote computer. One setting I have seen which, which uh, seems to be a limitation in this version of Cloudberry is that if you check this box there does not seem to be uh, an easy way to reset this setting so if for argument's sake I say leave the session open and do not ask for about the future about future sessions I do not get an opportunity somewhere to say reset that so I have found that reviewing this option every time uh, helps. The default option left me in the state it was before. So I'm going in again. I'm being prompted for the computer. You can see the effect my logging in is having on the other computer. And again, this time I'm going to, rather than all have the session, I'm going to say sign up. And as you can see, Computer 2 is signing out um, under the control 
of the instructions I transmitted from the controlling computer. I'm connecting again. It's time to assign that computer into which CloudBerry has been installed and is running. And I am presented with the login screen. You can see both screens. Coming in sync. Computer 2 has loaded and this is followed by computer 1 in order to make things easier i'm going to show the desktop wallpaper that concludes this series on the cloudberry remote desktop i hope it was useful and I remind people to leave reviews of the product so that this product can, you know, flourish. It is a free product. It is ideal as a support utility. It is ideal and a good product as a simple tool to control your computers. It has the security. It has the functionality. One hopes that this product can be developed further so that new functionality and more efficient performance can be obtained from the product. Thank you very much and till next time, goodbye.